Her mother's lip curled in disgust. And I suppose whoever is running this place persuaded you when you visit Roma, when you visited New Rome last month, that you have paranormal abilities. Cassie, will you never grow up? Cassie smiled. It was a smile as cold as her mother's. I felt her mind reach out. She had fashioned a mind probe so clumsy that it must have hurt her mother as it entered her, and she spoke her name. I heard the old woman gasp with pain and clutch at her head. Is that proof enough for you, mother? Cassie asked. Or are your own senses as untrustworthy as you keep telling me mine are? Her mother's mouth hung open. Her eyes bulged in disbelief. You, what did you do? The memory dissolved and the mind stream sang its song to me, alluring, infinitely sweet, promising release from pain, from sorrow, from desire. I dared not stay there any longer. Wrenching myself upward, I was too weary to armour myself against the strands of thought floating past me. One brushed me and all at once I was inside the old dream of walking along a dark tunnel, hearing the drip of water into water, and ahead was the dull yellow flash, flash, flash of light, like a signal. Stop, said a woman's voice, beautiful and strangely loud. Do not enter or you will die. The shock of hearing a voice in a place where I had never heard one before woke me. I opened my eyes and found myself blinking into daylight, the dream slipping away like dawn mist. I thought of the vision I had experienced of Cassie, weeping at the death of her lover, and then of her dream, of her mind, forming a clumsy but powerful probe to invade her mother's mind. Clearly, Hannah Seraphim had taught her to use her powers. Cassandra, her mother had called her, not far from Cassandra to Cassandra. Get up, Elspeth Inlay, Maraman said peevishly. I'm hungry. And that's all I've got. Is that, is that Is that long enough? No, I can do some just a little bit. Okay, I'll do another little bit. But you tell me if I run out of time, okay? okay. It's, a, it's a second excerpt from a different place. Before I tell you anything more, I must ask how you got past the barricade, Novini asked. I left Sarah to explain, and Novini nodded. I see. So you will not have used your misfit powers. Zarak shook his head, looking bewildered. But I saw that it had not been a question. What's going on here? I asked. Why was one of Malik's men guarding the barricade? Novini gave me an approving look. Stobie Edensol it would be because he's sensitive to the talents of your people. Unlike the rest of the men at the barricade, he would not have been wearing a demon band, so he would know if any misfit was trying to gain entry to Safewell. It's sheer good luck that she didn't make any attempt to enter his mind. <coughs> demon bands, I said, unable to believe I was hearing about them again so soon after Brida had spoken of them. On the other hand, Malik and Voss and some of the other rebels had them. Indeed, it was the wearing of a demon band that had prevented us realising Malik meant to betray us, and no doubt more had been found when they entered the abandoned herd of cloister. You might have noticed, Kuria now said, that you were unable to far seek us here. Well, it's no secret that the herd is here and elsewhere in the land, made a practice of laying caches of tainted matter and studying the tops of the cloister walls with poison fragments, knowing it would inhibit our talents. It was done before the rebellion, Courier said grimly, but it's also been done and is being done since by Voss's men. They've poisoned the entire perimeter of the region, as well as along all the fences. But to what end, <coughs> I asked. Surely not so Voss can be re-elected chieftain. No, although that certainly is what Voss believes, Nomini said. He believes it because Malik told him, and Malik would have allayed his fears that someone would find out about the blockade, send in armsmen to investigate. Perhaps he even told Voss, what is almost certainly true, that Dardella will not move against him until after the elections. But let me tell my tale from the beginning. It's quicker. I stifled a feeling of impatience and nodded. When Voss's men began to call at homesteads in and about Seafold at the... Be <laughs> before winter time, sorry, spelling the same. Before winter time, demanding that folk pledged their votes to him in the chieftain election that would take place after Thor, I thought him a fool. Once Dardellan learned what was happening, Voss would be dealt with by the Council of Chieftains. Voss's oppressions increased. 
I thought him a fool. People's letters were allowed to leave Saithwold only if they did not criticize him or speak of the situation here in any critical way. A decree was issued forbidding citizens of the region to travel without permission because of the danger of being waylaid by brigands. Then the blockade was set up, supposedly to prevent robbers or suspicious folk entering our region. Little by little, we realized that no one was being given permission to travel and that the blockade was as much to keep us in as others out. It was ludicrous, but I realized, as anyone might, that, as I said, Dardellen would do nothing. I would have done the same in his place, and I was confident that Voss would not profit ultimately by his activities. I advised those neighbors and friends who sought my advice simply to wait. All would be put right in time. But having assured everyone that all would be well, I became troubled, for some of the dogs told Courier of men creeping about my property, laying caches of tainted matter. He overheard them say that it was being done on Malik's advice. That made me very uneasy. Boss is foolish enough to suppose he could get away with forcing himself upon this region as its chieftain, but Malik must know his efforts were doomed to failure. So what was Malik up to? Then I heard a rumor that a second blockade had been set up on the other side of Saithwood, that is, on the road that leads from the town to the cliffs. Supposedly the new barricade was meant to prevent robbers creeping into the town from that direction, but it occurred to me to wonder if its true purpose might not be to prevent anyone venturing near Malik's main coastal camp. Then it came to me that this might be the purpose of both barricades. Are you saying that Malik does or does not want Voss to become chieftain of Saithwold? I asked. I am saying that Voss's chieftainship and all that he has done to ensure it is irrelevant to Malik, except insofar as it serves us a distraction, Novini answered. There was a soft knock at the door leading to the kitchen, and Winda and a servant entered carrying trays, laden with mugs, jugs of ale, bread, cheese, some sort of pie. Novini remained silent, remained silent as the two girls came into the sunken area and laid a table. As they turned to go, Winda assured me in her gentle voice that Darius was resting peacefully. I will prepare some poultices and he ought to be more comfortable by tomorrow, she said, and went out. I trust Winda, Novini said, when the door closed behind his granddaughter. But she does not know what I am about to tell you, nor have I dared to impart any of it to my friends or neighbours, even to my trusted retainers. Any of them might have made some slip of the tongue that would reach Malik's ears, and he would have had no hesitation in resorting to torture to find out what else they might know.